Welcome to Springville Seventh-day Adventist Church online here in Melbourne, Australia. We'd like to say thanks to everybody who has been sending beautiful comments and beautiful uh, suggestions on how to do this program better and beautiful verses to encourage us and also encourage one another. Please today, as we sing, as we as we lift up our Lord, please read the description down below. You, you need anything you need anything for today? It's done in the description hymns, the songs for today, and also if you want to if you want to contribute to this church, there is also uh, something there in the description down below. But the question for today is the following: What are you grateful for this week? Please comment on that on the comments down below and send us a verse as well. What are you grateful for this week? As we continue, let us have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we'd like to say thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you've done for us this week. We like to exalt you, Lord, because you are a powerful God. You are the creator of heaven and earth. And today, Lord, we're here to praise your name, to say thanks. To, we are together to worship you, Lord. So please be with us. Bless our time together. Bless this Sabbath day together. And uh, Lord, as we... As we go through this day, may we reflect on what you have done for us. And we, we, we also like to thank you for the eternal life that you give us. And we also like to say thanks for giving us life and for giving us everything that we do, everything that we have, everything that we breathe. For all those things we say thank you. And please continue to be in our hearts, in our minds. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're going to sing this beautiful song that where we talk about Jesus, but we talk about Jesus as a lamb, because that's how the Bible refers to him too, as a lamb. And this lamb, the lamb of God, he sacrifice his life for us the bible says he gave his his blood for us and there is power in the blood of jesus so let's sing this beautiful hymn which is in in 294 hymn 294 which is also in the description down below power in the blood There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Last verse. Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you leave daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power. Wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. We have a special speaker for today, and his name is, and I'll try to pronounce it properly, Peter. Is that you? So thank you, Peter, for your wonderful words. This Sabbath, brothers and sisters in Christ, 
we'll have again uh, that uh, special virtual church where many of us will join our in our homes where we can still share the gospel and study the Bible. I will encourage everyone to take your Bibles at home so we can together read and study the biblical text. At the beginning, I will just read uh, one text from Luke chapter 10 and uh, verse 25 to 28. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And answering, he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you had answered right, do this and you shall live. We're living really in very strange times now. Without any warning, suddenly our lives completely changed. The freedom we have, we had, was taken away. It did not even come to our mind that the situation in the world could change so fast. It never happened before. End of February, we were with our colleagues uh, traveling in Europe, through Europe. This epidemic was just starting, but some people already were so scared from the news, from media, they, they did not even want to see us. They were scared with possibility of losing their own current lives. Now all the world which God has made is worried and scared about own lives. I'm sure that uh, past few weeks you heard we need to do all this to save lives or the other one, stay home to save lives. So we do protecting ourselves, wearing masks, gloves for our and others protection do everything possible not to get sick, infected, get some preventive medication, good vitamins every morning, evening, exercise, have a good sleep, and so on. Are we as a real Christian also so scared for this life, a relatively short life? What about the life which God offering us? Do you know what life is promising to us? Or did we already forgotten in all this rumor around us? Let's look at the John 3.16. We all know this verse very well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son then whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have the everlasting life, the life where we can live forever. As we are now focusing to be safe and protecting our current lives, how much more energy we might invest, we should invest, to make sure that we get the promised eternal life. Let's study now a bit Bible and have a look what God's promising us through the people which write this Bible for us. Look at the Paul and he writes in Titus in his letter. It's a Titus chapter one and verse two. I hope of eternal life, said Paul, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Did you notice that? God promised us eternal life. We know that God cannot lie. Therefore, we need to know how to secure this privilege of eternal life. What is eternal life? 
How can we get it? How can we protect it so we don't lose it? Jesus says in uh, John 17, verse 3, This is eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ you have sent. Therefore, to have the eternal life, we need to know God and Jesus Christ. It is essential for securing and protecting our eternal life. So the question is, how can we know God and Jesus? And again, have a look what Jesus says in another verse, in John 5.39. And uh, I'm reading it. You study the scripture in detail because you think you have uh, the source of eternal life in them. This scripture testify on my behalf. Do you know who they talked to this time, who Jesus was talking to? It was the teacher of the law. And it was the time of feast in Jerusalem. We can say today that uh, we can ask Jesus the same question. And Jesus will give us a similar answer, I think. They, the Jew, really study the scripture in detail. They memorized the scripture, I would say more than we do today, because they were looking for the source of eternal life. Now, we do study scripture as well, I hope, in detail, we memorize. That is all good, but they, and also sometimes we, do not see that scripture is really, what the scripture is really saying to us. And let's have a look just the verse, the next verse, in John 5, verse 40. Yet, you don't want to come to me to get eternal life. So we need Jesus to get and secure eternal life. We study the scripture to find him there. When we find him, he can give us eternal life. He has the eternal life for us. Let's look at another verse. In Matthew 11, when verse 28, come to me all who are tired from carrying heavy loads and I will give you rest. So let's go to Jesus with all our heavy loads, our problems. He knows how to remove it from us and he can help us with everything without stress, sickness, any problem, we can give it to him because he is the one which can carry it for us. In reality, we are very privileged people and I will tell you why. God, according to the David, knows us much before we're even born and I read for you this Psalm and if you have a Bible, please open it with me. And it's a Psalm 139, verse 16. And I have two translations over here, so we can grasp, actually, this idea. So I'm reading Psalm 139, verse 16. Your eyes saw me when I was only fetus. Every day of my life was recorded in a book before one of them had taken place. Just read the another translation, a little bit different. You saw me before I was born. The days allotted to me had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever began. So what's God saying over here that he knows us before we were born? He recorded all our lives in his book. It says he's recorded in your book. And everything is recorded before it even happened. So if we take it really, he knows how long we will live, how long uh, we will be on this earth, in this life, what we will do. He needs everything about us. What God wants from us, he wants from us to know him. 
because if he knows so much about us, we need to find out who he is. And we need to trust him because he can give us this everlasting life as well. So now we are protecting ourselves with a mask, gloves, might be large glasses, not like the one I have now. And some people even walking on a street with hood just to make sure they don't catch anything. So we are protecting our lives. Well, God provides for us protection for promised eternal life. So we not lose it. See what Paul says about it. And I will read this time a few verses from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 to 17. If you can read it with me in your homes. Finally, receive your power from the Lord and from his mighty strength. Put on all the armor that God supplies. In this way, you can take a stand against devil's strategies. This is not wrestling much against the human opponent. We are wrestling with rulers, authorities, the powers who governs this world of darkness, and the spiritual forces that control evil in the heavenly world. For this reason, take up the armor that God supplies when you will be able to take a stand during these evil days. Once you have overcome all obstacles, you will be able to stand with ground. So then, take your stand, fast and true, around your waist like a belt. Put on God's approval for your breastplate. Put on your shoes so that you are ready to spread the good news that gives peace. In addition to all these, take the Christian faith as your shield. With it, you can put out all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Also take salvation as your helmet and the word of God as the sword for the spirit which supplies it. So what is the protection we can get it? If I just recapitulate, true as your belt, true about Jesus Christ, where can we find it? We find it in uh, his word, in the Bible. So we need to study about him, about, so we know the true. Righteousness as your breastplate. This righteousness which he gave us is bulletproof. No one can get through. And it says it can stand any devil's strategies. Shoes. Why do we need shoes to protect ourselves? See, God give us the protection, not just, just to keep it for ourselves, but he protect us, but asking us, go and tell others. You remember that Philip, he was talking to the person traveling over the road. When he explained him everything, what happened? He's got that special shoes we got took them to some other place to do more work. So give us the shoes as well, comfortable shoes. Then we have a Christian faith as a shield, helmet our salvation. Word of God as the sword, as a weapon, special weapon, which will the spirit supply. So this is really complete armament soldier's armament with everything which the soldier needs to do the work. With this armament, we are fully protected. All this is provided for free. And do you know who is the supplier? Have you noticed in those verses? It says, God supply, God himself. He said it twice there, armor that God supplies. This is very good news. He does not have a shortage of supplies, our God, as we did in some uh, items lately. Do we want to get it? Then pray and ask every day. It is God will to give us this protection. So he will be happy to supply this armament to us. 
There's no way that anyone or anything can steal or take from us our promised eternal life when we have it and also, also when we're using it. It was designed by God himself because God gave it to us and it was designed that it fit perfect to everyone. It was designed for every person especially. So it's worth to get it. And we can be also sure that he will give it to us. Because uh, let's read 1 John 5.14. And there it says, we have courage in God's presence. Because we are sure that he hears us when we pray. If we ask him for anything that is according to his will. His will is to give it to us. Give us this armor. And if we ask for it, it is his will. He will give it to us. So pray for this armor. Well, let's have a look now for another part of the scripture. As we're looking through some of the verses. I think we all believe that we are part um, of the last message to seven churches. And you can guess which one is the last one. It's a Laudica church. What advice we have there from the true weakness, witness to protect, for protection of our promised eternal life? Let's look. If you can open for yourself the Bible in Revelation 3, and then it starts with verse 14. And we can look at it together. I won't read it all but I'll just uh, touch a few points out of that. So what Jesus, Jesus Christ does not say the Laodiceans, if you read it, that they have some wrong message, wrong truth. Like he's saying to Ephesus or Pergamus church, where Jesus Christ actually saying that they have those deeds of Nicolaitans. And some other places he showing the wrong teaching we come to the church. There's only one, char one charge to this uh, church, and that is that is, uh, they are lukewarm. So the last church really possessed the uh, complete truth. They understood the prophecy. They understand a lot of things which was revealed to them, and the church is satisfied by knowing it. Does not need anything more. We know everything. This position is defined here as a lukewarm condition. The true witness completely rejects anyone who is in this lukewarm condition. No eternal, no eternal life for lukewarm Christians. This is really a life-threatening situation to everyone who is lukewarm. And uh, we need everyone urgently to find what changes and protection is offered from God, not to be part of this lukewarm group of people. So what is the solution from the true witness in this last message? And how we can get whatever is offered? And again, where we can get it from? In other words, who is the supplier of it? And how much it will cost to get it? Well, let's I mean, examine this situation. Let's have a look to the counsel from the true witness for this church in Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18. It says there, I counsel you to buy from me. You notice what they say? He counsel to buy from me. So now it's not free anymore. God can, as God supplied the previous one. So how much do we have to pay? What currency do we need to buy it? Do we need to save a lot? Or is it expensive? I like the Bible, how it was written. So I find a verse which can give us the answer. In Isaiah 55, one, 55 and verse 1. And there is written, The Lord says, 
Come, everyone who is thirsty. Here is water. Come, you that have no money, but grain and eat. Buy grain and eat. Come, buy wine and milk. It will cost you nothing. And I read it from the different translation again. Listen, whoever is thirsty, come to the water. Whoever has no money can come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk. You don't pay, you don't have to pay, it is all free. So it will cost us nothing to get whatever God offer. But there is a condition. What's the condition there? Did you notice it? It's written there twice in every uh, translation. The condition is we need to come. We need to really want it and ask to receive it. Costs us nothing. But without coming to him, we won't get it. So it's an example you can see on Ed in TV, something which they offer for free in the shop. And they said, come and get it. And then we sit at home and we will not get it. We need to really go and ask because God's promised it. And then we will get it for ourselves. So we'll have, let's have a look what is on offer. We can get it for free when we come. And it continues in this verse in Revelation 3, verse 18. Gold purified by fire that you might be rich. This is very good. Gold purified by fire. God doesn't offer us nine or 14 karat gold, which is mixed with impurity or under the metals. He offers pure gold. In sanctuary, the gold always represents the divinity, the divine nature of God. And the wood, which the furniture was built, represents the, the humanity. So gold is offering to share with us the divine nature, his divine nature, purity, holiness. Attributes described in Galatians 5, verse 22. Joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, humility and self-control. These are the characteristics which we can possess when we receive the gold purified by fire. And not only that we will possess, we can also share it with others, and then we will become rich. What is the next one you offering to that uh, group of people? White clothing so that you might be clothed. So we are naked, and we need some clothes. There's no much question and, and uh, need of study what did represent. John explained it by himself in Revelation 19, verse 8, where he says, the fine linen is the righteousness of the saint. And Jesus talks about it also. We need to wear also this clothes on a wedding, which is the clothes which he provides for us, otherwise we cannot get there. So it is the righteousness which we receive, and uh, we need to have this righteousness from Jesus, from God himself. And the last one is, I know, I know it, your eyes with I self, so that you might see. Apparently we are blind. I will just read a statement from Ellen White, short statement about this subject from Review and Herald, August 17, 1894, when she writes there. The anointing, the oil for anointing is the oil of his grace, which will give spiritual eyesight to the soul in blindness and darkness, that he might distinguish between the workings of the Spirit of God and the spirit of the enemy. The spirit of the enemy is working more and more in this world. And we know that we are people of prophecy. And we know also that the spirit of the God will be slowly removed. 
and we need to recognize which is the right spirit of God. So we need this anointing. Without it, we might be completely lost. The message to Laodicea is finishing with another God's promise. And let's read it now in Revelation 3, 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome and have sat down with my father in his throne. Well, let's protect ourselves by following Jesus Christ, the true witness counsel, so we can sit in God's throne eternally. Also share this offer to as many people as possible. Holy Spirit will work with them to accept this calling because it's God willed to save as many as possible. In closing, I want to read one more verse to you, and it's from Peter. And he's asking this to all of us, and it's in Acts 3.19, and it says there, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins might be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So my prayer is, even when we now protecting our life, that we protect the eternal life. We do everything for that, because we have only this life on this earth to prepare for this eternal life. So my prayer is that we will work on our salvation with fear and trembling, as the Philippians letter to Philippians says to secure the promise of eternal life. That is my prayer for all of us today, this Saturday. Let our God and Jesus Christ bless us all. I will just have a short prayer to close this uh, part. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that uh, you give us so much you gave us your son. You give us the protection and all the things which we can do to be safe because you are the king of this earth. You have the victory over the Satan and we can now follow you and you can give us the victory as well. So please give us this protection which you promise everything which is specially designed for us. So we can see, we can give the message to others, and we will not be overcome by the devil. This is my prayer for all this church, and I hope we can come together again very soon, where can we discuss and study our Bibles. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Peter, for those wonderful words for today. We like to do our last song, and that is hymn 330. If you have your hymns, or if you, if you, if you have, if you read the description down below, you can do so too. And the name of the hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be. Let's sing. Take my life, I'll let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands, I'll let them move at the impulse of Thy love, at the impulse of Thy love. Last verse. Take my life, my Lord, I pour on thy feet its treasure store. Take my life, and I will be ever only all for thee, ever only all for thee. 
isn't singing beautiful, especially when we sing to the Lord? Well, I, will, I want to continue to encourage you to, to continue to send us encouragement through all these beautiful messages of how we can, we can not ju just encourage one another, but how we can make this program better. And uh, of course, if you would like to support uh, uh, the ministry of the Springville Seventh-day Adventist Church, by all means do so and read in the description down below on how you can do it. Okay, there is only one more thing I'd like to say to you today, and that is, may God bless you, and may He keep you safe. Until next week, Amen. <laughs>